In order to maximize efficiency in your shop, sometimes you have to combine multiple technologies. So today, we're gonna take our new EDM and we're gonna cut a custom shape into this carbide insert to help Donnie's machine run as fast as possible. It's gonna blow your mind. Boom. The first challenge that we encountered when Donnie brought us this project is these horn holders are black oxide coated. Now this black oxide coating is actually non-conductive and it's going to insulate our holder which isn't going to allow our EDM to work properly. So I've got our multimeter here and I've got it set on the audible ohm setting so when you put them together you should hear that beep when the circuit is complete. So let's touch it on our 246 block and this insert. Now, as you can see, we have no audible sound. You might get a little bit of a reading, but it's gonna be bouncing all over the place telling you that the connection is unstable. But when we touch our other insert, we have a stable connection and we have a really nice audible sound. So what's the difference between the two? Why does one work and one doesn't? Well, we actually stoned the bottom of this holder to remove the oxide coating with our tierless stone. These are available on our online store, by the way. Now stoning the bottom is gonna remove our black oxide coating and that's gonna give us a stable connection between our table, our holder, our insert, and our wire. Now that we got that problem solved, let's go ahead and get set up. Oh man, come meet Titans of CNC at Emo 2023 in Hanover, Germany. The dates and times are right there. I can't wait to see you guys, boom. Now, since we're cutting form tools, precision and a good surface finish is an absolute priority. So today, we're using 10,000 diameter AC cut AH900 wire from GF. Now this is a zinc coated brass wire and when precision and surface finish are an absolute must, this is the wire to use. We can get down to a three micro inch in carbide using this wire. We also have smart wire capabilities with this and the smart wire is gonna show us right on our unique walk control how much wire we have left as well as how much wire we've used. All right, now that everything's set up, let's get to burning. All right, so we just pulled form tool number one out of the machine. Took about a half hour to cut this form tool. We did a rough and four skim passes and it turned out absolutely beautiful. Now our Cut P550 Pro is the perfect machine for this. Not only can we easily burn through carbide, but we can hold two microns of contour accuracy on our inserts using this machine. Plus, they come right off the machine with a sharp cutting edge and no burrs. So if you look over at our Uniqua control, you'll see a graphic representation of our second insert burning. One important thing to know is we've got a lot of intricate features and the accuracy of these features on our turned part is gonna be dependent on how accurate our wire EDM cuts our form tool. So we're really depending on our GF wire EDM to do an excellent job for us and I know it will. Now that we have our form tools done by Trevor on his EDM, let's put them together and throw them in our DT26 and see how good they do. This idea actually comes from back in the day at my dad's shop. We had screw machines and we had a lot of circular tools, which were pretty much all of this in one tool. Nowadays on Swiss machines, you kind of have to use tools that are as wide as like your gang tool. My tools are only 12 millimeter wide. I can't just have a tool as long as I want. So I have to use four tools. Boom, boom. All right, so now that we got our form tools nice and assembled here, let's throw them in our machine. This is pretty easy to set up, really. All I have to do is slide my tool to the diameter of my material. As long as the machine's in position, this is gonna work out fine. I know where the beginning of each form tool is in my program, so it's just an X move. And again, this is kind of why this can make your life a lot easier. In reality, the program for this is like eight lines. I just have to call up a tool, feed down an X, go home. That's it, and I get all this profile geometry, all these radii, all these angles, all done, all easy. 
because all I have to do is go on my shadow graph and find where each tool is in Z, adjust those, and this is gonna run all day. And if I just make sure my diameters are right and I check one length per each tool, I'm fine. These parts usually have like 80 lengths on them. So if you're gonna go through and single point all this, you've really gotta watch it because one length's wrong, the part's no good, right? But with a form tool, this isn't gonna vary like other tools do. So it's just wildly easier. It's easier and it's faster. Easier and faster, wow. Not many times you get that in life, right? Now you might be noticing when you watch these tools cut that you're hearing a as the tools are cutting. And that's because I'm using Tornos' ACB technology. What this basically does is while the tool's moving down an X, it moves an oscillation pattern in sync to the spindle to create air pockets in the cut. And this is guaranteed to break the chip. So instead of having to worry about some big, huge nest building up, I can just use a G code to make the chip break and make my life a lot easier. And another thing I gotta say, we ran this dry without coolant so we could show you guys the machining footage. It is insane to me how good the Blazer coolant made this part look. I was nervous at first, the part looked pretty torn. And once I ran it with coolant, the part came out really shiny. So good job, Blazer, your products rule. So now let's run our final part. I've made all the adjustments I've needed to make. Let's see how good this thing comes out. How's it going? Well, we are gonna be finding out right about now. Voila, go. look at that. Yeah, you did your job right, it should look good, Trevor. Looks pretty good. Actually, wow, that looks insanely good. That's beautiful. Yeah, wow, look at Should that. Should we measure it? So what's it supposed to be at? Uh, it should be close to, yeah, four, only two tenths off. I just ran a couple and adjusted it in. This is not first try. I'm not gonna try to claim that I did it that perfectly on okay. the first go. Okay, let's see what this one is. Every top part should be 437. Okay. Not bad, sir. <sighs> not really surprised. Yeah, I know, those tools are perfect. I mean, all you literally had to do was plunge them into the part. How hard is that, you know? It's actually not hard, Trevor, and that's the whole point of this video, is that a part like that could be made so easy. Using EDM. Well, like, it's a Swiss problem. Like, you're an accessory to my success. But now we really need to make sure that the lengths are right, so we need to check this on the shadow graph and make sure everything's- The comparator. Yeah, let's take it to the shadow graph. Right. Actually, wow. I am... Dude. Wow. So like, this is what you couldn't see out at the machine that I was talking about that would be really difficult to do. Like, little features like this guy in here, if you didn't have a tool that small, you can't get in there. That's just how it works, right? So the fact that I can just plunge down an axe and all these features form in one movement is wildly simpler than coming in and doing all these contours and lining all this up. Yeah, we can check this third groove here. This is supposed to be 115, but this could be a little off because it's two groove tools. Actually, wow, no, it's about 116. Yeah, th th like this is gonna be one of the parts where you really wanna check because this is an intersection point of the two groove tools, right? So if it's a thou off, that's an actual adjustment. That's not the form tool itself. Well, what's crazy to me is like Donnie was saying, there's actually two tools that are forming this groove. So there's no blend that I can see right here on this diameter right here, which is actually pretty incredible. That is a really good looking part, and that is a really That's good looking money. result. Let's jump into SolidWorks and see how we actually designed our form tools. So we drew the five degree angle in just like we have it on our horn inserts, and then we came in and we actually moved the position of this forward by 10 thousandths, because on our wire we're actually gonna cut into our insert by 10 thousandths. So again, this is very important to make sure the geometry of our inserts actually comes out correct. Then, essentially what we did was we came in and we converted all the entities on our spool. So we came in and we said, we wanna extract all this geometry so that we can put this into our insert and program it on the wire. So we converted these entities and then we closed off our box and then we did a cut extrude. Now on this cut extrude, I actually have a one degree draft in here and we have it drafting outward. Now again, that is important too because we want clearance on our insert. As you can see, we've got our taper going the right way because 
Here we've got wider cutting edge, and down here we've got a narrower cutting edge. That's gonna give us the proper clearance while we're cutting. I am extremely impressed at how good these tools came out. First try off the GF, that machine is insane. Yeah, and honestly, I'm shocked that the Tornos, it was so easy for you to just set the tools up, write a little bit of code, and boom, plunge right into that thing, and now we got a beautiful pneumatic swivel valve. It's pretty simple, like really, if you're making a part like this with features like this, thin grooves all over the place, all these different angles, you definitely wanna consider using form tools. And if you don't have an EDM at your shop, Horn does make custom tools. So you definitely wanna check them out if you're ever thinking about doing something like this. And this is just another example of us combining different technologies that are under one roof to improve the process in our Swiss department. So I absolutely love looking for different opportunities to do that, and you guys should look for them in your own shops. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching today. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you wanna to talk to this guy more about Swiss, join our Discord, because this guy is always on there answering your questions. I do my best. Good job, Pitt. Yeah, dude. Boom. Oh. We're out. Barry in his natural habitat, running a one axis saw. Very interesting. Making bigger chips than either of these. <laughs> yes, metal chips of greatness. Have you ever done this? That dries your mouth out so bad. <laughs>